Hi friends, this week we are going to talk about summarizing. That's a big word, huh? All it means is that we're going to retell a story. So when we retell a story, there's kind of a formula we use to make it easy on us. And it's the four W's and an H. So the first W is who. Who was the story about? Who are the main characters in the story? What happened in the story? Tell the events of the story. When did the story take place? Was it a long time ago? Was it in the morning? Was it in present times? When did the story happen? Where did the story take place? What's the setting? Was it outside? Was it at school? Was it in Oklahoma? Where was it? Where was the story taking place at? And then the last one is an H. It is how. How did the story end? What was the solution? What was the ending of the story? Sometimes you'll see this as a fifth W and it'll say why. Why was the problem solved? But they mean the same thing. So for our purposes, we're going to say how did the story end? And we're going to read The Frog Prince and learn how to retell or summarizing using are four W's and an H. This is the story of the Frog Prince. In a faraway land, a princess was enjoying the cool evening breeze outside her family's castle. She had with her a small golden ball, which she loved to play with as a way to relax. On one particular toss, she threw it so high in the air that she lost track of it and the ball went rolling towards a spring. The ball plopped into the water and quickly sank out of sight. The princess began sobbing in despair. What does despair mean? She was really, really sad, wasn't she? And she wished her toy to return to her. Then a small frog popped out from the spring. What's wrong, beautiful princess? asked the frog. The princess wiped away her tears. <laughs> My favorite golden ball is gone, and nothing I do will bring it back. The frog tried his best to comfort the princess and assured her that he could retrieve the ball if she would grant him just one favor. <gasps> Anything! I'll give you all of my jewels and handfuls of gold, exclaimed the princess. The frog explained that he had no need for riches and only wanted a simple kiss from her in return. Ooh, she's going to have to kiss a frog. Gross. The thought of kissing a slimy frog made the princess shudder. Do you know what shudder means? She shook with disgust. Ooh. But in the end, she agreed as she really loved her golden ball. Without much effort, the agile frog jumped back into the spring and located the golden ball. In a blink of an eye, the frog had retrieved the ball and returned it to the princess. Keeping her word, the princess kissed the frog. Ew! Suddenly, the ground began to rumble and a haze of smoke filled the air. The to the princess's surprise, the frog was really a handsome prince. Oh my goodness, he was trapped by an evil witch's curse. Her kiss had freed the prince from a lifetime of pain and misery. The prince and princess became great friends, and eventually, after they had grown up, wed in a beautiful ceremony by the spring where they had First W, if we're going to retell or summarize the story, is who was the story about? Who was the story about? We had only had two characters. Who were they? The prince and the frog. Correct. Very good. What happened in the story? What were the events that happened in the story? Do you remember? Can you tell me? First, the princess lost her ball. Second, the frog found it. And he said he'd give it back only if what? She gave him a kiss. Good job. Okay, so for our next one, when did the story take place? Let's look back in our story and find Okay, let's read this first sentence. In a faraway land, a princess was enjoying the cool evening breeze outside her family's castle. So when was it? 
it was in the evening. It doesn't tell us any other clues that might say if it was a long, long time ago, because there's still prince and princesses today, not in the United States, but in places like Europe, there are. So, it could happen today. It doesn't tell us a time period. We just know that it was in the evening. Right down in the evening. Next W is where. Where did the story take place? And that was in that first sentence we just read. What did it say? In a faraway land, outside, by a spring. Is that what she said? She did. Very good. Good job. Okay, our next one is the H. How did the story end? The problem, the princess, the problem was she lost her ball. And it made her very sad. It said she was in despair. So how did that problem get solved? Yeah, the frog found it. And then what happened? What did the princess promise him? Yeah, she promised she would give him a kiss if he got the ball back. And what happened when she kissed him? What happened? Yeah, she turned. he turned into a prince. So how did the story end? The princess kissed the frog and he turned into a prince. Yeah, they became friends, didn't they? And then when they grew up, they got married. Very good. Now we're going to read the story of the three little pigs, and you're going to try doing this on your own, okay? Okay, this is the story of the three little pigs. You probably know this one already. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They were curious pigs and eager to learn more about the big, wide world. One bright summer morning, they packed their bags and set out together. So this tells us a wind, doesn't it? A summer morning. Yeah. Who is that? Can you read that? What's that say? Who's giving him a kiss by? Yeah, his mom. She gave him some cookies, didn't she? There they go. They got their, their little bags packed. Sister pig and the other brother pig up there. They're losing some luggage. Look at them playing. Jumping in the pool. Looks like they have some other forest friends there. Looks like fun. The three little pigs enjoyed being out on their own. They explored new places and made lots of new friends. The little pigs spent the warm summer days laughing and playing without a care in the world. Ooh, what's this look like? What's happening here? Yeah, it's getting colder, huh? The long summer days grew shorter. Many of the pigs' friends started to prepare for the colder days ahead. The little pigs realized they needed a house that would be warm and safe, just like the one they had left. What's Squirrel doing? Yeah, he's he's raking leaves, isn't he? Look, this pig, what does that say? Home builders. Oh, I have an idea, said one of the pigs. We can build our own house. Then we can have fun visiting each other. Oh, they're going to each have their own house. The first pig was so excited. I want to build a house fast as I can, he thought. He grabbed the first thing he straw, saw, some straw from a nearby field and set to work. See that? He's got some hay there, huh? He did not spend much time planning. Uh-oh, that already sounds like trouble. He did not spend much time planning his new straw house. Instead, he started building right away. Look, he's, just, he's got some rope and straw there. It looks pretty cool, though, doesn't it? It looks neat. After a short time, the house was finished. The little pig was so tired that he fell asleep right there on the grass. The other two pigs had doubts about the house made of straw. Maybe it's not strong enough, one of them said. Hmm, what do you think? You think straw is strong enough to be a house? I don't know. Is your house made of straw? No, probably not, huh? The second little pig thought, What can I use that will be better than straw? She gathered up the strongest, straightest sticks she could find. Ooh, sticks? Make it out of wood? That seems better, doesn't it? Oh, she's got a little frame there. 
She lashed some of the sticks together and built a frame. Then she tied sticks to the frame to make the walls. Definitely seems a little stronger than straw, doesn't it? Finally, the second pig finished her work and took a rest. A job well done, she thought. Meanwhile, the third pig remarked, It's very nice, but I don't think it's strong enough. Look, this one's even got a second story. Look at that. She did a good job on the house, didn't she? You think you just build a sticks, though? You think that'll last very long? I don't know. Let's find out. So the third little pig searched everywhere. What can I find that will be better than sticks? He wondered. He came across a tumbled down building. There were old bricks all around. He decided they would be just right for his house. Look, he's got in the bricks there. Ooh, look, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? The third little pig set to work. Brick by brick by brick, his house took shape. It took a long time, but the pig finished his sturdy house. The tired pig began to clean up, quite satisfied with his handiwork. The other two little pigs shook their heads. They were not sure this one little house was worth all the hard work. Look, this one's got windows in it, and everything's got a chimney. I know, that looks like a pretty good house to live in. After each pig had built a little house, they had some time to play. One day, when they were out having fun, they happened across some wolf tracks. Uh-oh. When the pigs saw that a wolf had been nearby, they all ran home and locked their houses up tight. Look, there she goes. The sister saying, we better go. There's a wolf nearby. We don't want to get eaten by a wolf. There he is. He's, he's by the first pig's house. Look at that. It's a little scary. Soon enough, the wolf appeared at the door of the first little pig's house. The straw house shone golden in the sunshine. Little pig, little pig, let me in, said the wolf, grinning his big wolf grin. No, cried the first little pig. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <gasps> what happened? Oh my goodness, what's he going to do? That doesn't look good. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, shouted the wolf. And then an with an enormous breath, the wolf blew down the house of straw. Oh no, there goes the pig, his little coffee he was drinking, even his glasses fell off. Ooh, that, that wolf looks satisfied, like he's going to get that pig, huh? Is he going to get the pig, or do you think the pig is going to run away? Ooh, looks like he made it to his sister's house. Look, they have it on the door. No wolf. The first pig ran to the second pig's house. Right after they had closed and locked the door, the wolf appeared. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in, said the wolf. What do you think he wants to do? Probably wants to gobble them up, huh? No, cried the pigs. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Think this one's going to stand up. He's going to huff and puff, I bet. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, shouted the wolf. Look, there he is, blowing, blowing, trying to blow the house down. Is it going to work? Oh, no. It looked like he was able to do it. The house of sticks wasn't strong enough. And with a tremendous breath, the wolf blew down the house of sticks. Poor little pigs. Are they going to get away this time? Oh, there's the, there's the big brother. Oh, looks like the little brother got in. Oh, so maybe they're safe. The two little pigs ran as fast as they could to the brick house. All three little pigs watched from the windows as the wolf approached. So they made it. That's good. Little pig, little pigs, let me come in, demanded the wolf. By now, he was feeling pretty sure of himself. No, shouted all the pigs together. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Oh, look, they got a big sign up on this one. No wolves. 
Look, they're hiding in behind the windows. <gasps> there he is. Trying to blow that house down again. You think he's going to be able to do it this time? Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, shouted the wolf. But even with a stupendous breath, the wolf could not blow down the house of bricks. The wolf slumped, exhausted, outside the little brick house. What's he doing there? What's going to happen? What did this ha little pig build on this house that we talked about that the others didn't? Is this a chimney? Yeah. After resting a bit, the wolf came up with a new plan. The three little pigs guessed what he might do, because they are smart little pigs. So they lit a blazing fire in the fireplace. Uh oh, his tail's on fire. Look at that. Look at the little pigs down there. We can guess what's going to happen, huh? Just as the pigs had guessed, the wolf climbed down the chimney. Before he could reach the bottom, his tail caught fire. Oh, that sounds painful. Oh my gosh, they look so happy. Look at that. Oh, and look at the wolf. Ooh, his tail's still on fire. He's smoking. The wolf could not pull himself up and out of that chimney fast enough. He raced away in a panic. The three little pigs stood hand in hand as they watched the wolf disappear into the distance. From that day forward, he was never seen again, and the pigs lived happily ever after. So now it's your turn. You're going to get a piece of paper. Your reading notebook would be best. And write down exactly what you see here. Who was the story about? What happened in the story? When did the story take place? Where did the story take place? And your last one, how did the story end? Okay, so I'll play that again. So you should pause it right here. Get your notebook and write these sentences down. And then after you write the last one, where did the story take place? Push play again so you can see the last one, which is how did the story end? Okay, so pause now and write these down. Okay, you should have written your four W's down, and now you're going to write your last one, your H. How did the story end? Write that down. Pause the video while you do that. Okay, now you've got these written in your notebook. You should have them. You better have them because I will look at them next time we see each other. So you're going to fill these in. Who was the story about? That's easy, isn't it? What happened in the story? So tell me the major things that happened in the event, the big events in the story. When did the story take place? We talked a little bit about that, and it talks about the seasons. That is your when. Where did the story take place? And even though it didn't say exactly where it was, you can look at the pictures and guess. And then how did the story end? Okay. If you need to look back at the story, you need to listen to it again. Just rewind the video. And then you're going to practice your four W's and an H all by yourself. All right, you got this.